please welcome Christopher Chapman. Because I've chosen Sally Robinson's portrait of Elma Rivelli. This year in particular, very high standard, I think, which is very gratifying. It's nice to win in a strong field. Um, and I think it's a very generous amount of prize money. I mean, the, the Hannon fam family and Shirley Hannon, who initiated the award, um, have made it such a generous prize that it attracts the best of the portrait artists we have in Australia. Often in, in these prizes it's a bit of a lottery because they get many more entries than they can hang and even if your painting's almost as good as the, the finalists um, and you don't get in, well, you've still exposed your work to those judges. Maybe they'll remember your style or your approach and have a close look next time. Keep, keep at it. We're in the atrium of Aurora Place, which is an office block in the city. They have a space here on the ground floor that they make available to different artists to display their work. It's a win-win situation. The artist gets a bit of exposure and the building gets some nice artwork on their walls. The, the work in the centre is a portrait of my mother. Um, this one won the Portia Guiche Prize in 2012. Is it nice to have your mother hanging here? Yes, I think she'd be very pleased. <laughs> My approach is realistic, but not photographic. I, I try not to produce something that looks just like a photograph. I don't see there's any point. If you take a good photograph, put a photograph on the wall. Don't um, try and reproduce it as a painting. So I like to think of my work as synthetic realism, that it's realistic, but not, um, you know, totally following um, the photo. Yes, I, I, I think I like the city. I, I, I'm a city person. About seven years here in, in uh, the bottom of the Astor building in the city. It's a wonderful location because although it's right in the heart of the CBD, the entrance is just down a little lane, Philip Lane, so it's quiet enough so that I can get on with work and yet it's got enough buzz of the city to make it interesting. For many years I produced fine art screen prints um, based on Australian landscapes and Antarctic landscapes, wild places. But after many years for health reasons and also because I wanted a creative change, challenge, um, I went back to painting and, and thought I'd like to try my hand at Portraits, I think portraiture is a very basic, um, well it fulfills a very basic need that we all have to look at faces and try to understand another person by their expression and their, the way they hold their face and their body language. Um, we learn from birth to get clues from other people to understand them and so portraiture feeds into this. It's a, a very basic response. Everyone can relate to a face, whereas maybe they can't relate to a particular landscape or a still life. Every face is interesting. When you're producing screen prints, you use stencils. And I loved using stencils, so when I went back to painting, I adapted the use of stencils with paint to get the, the textures that I, I really have always enjoyed and using a mechanical stencil with dots or dashes I can build up a, a slightly sort of pixelated effect in the painting which has some um, you know echoes of the way we see the world in in the digital age but it also gives 
a sort of a flickering effect of light and colour across the surface, which is interesting. Well, I started off at first using imprinting off other surfaces to get a texture, but I couldn't control that enough, so I went hunting in um, two dollar shops for things that I could maybe use to paint through, and, and after a while I, I developed this stencil technique, and, and now I sometimes get specific textures laser cut so that I can control exactly the size and shape of the um, little spots of colour I create. I think it's always easier to paint an older face because the expressions that we wear most of the time, whether we're smiling or grumpy, get etched into our face and the, um, there's a lot of handles, therefore, that you can hang um, a portrait on, that you can get clues to pers a person's personality and character traits. Whereas a young, beautiful person is much harder to paint because they haven't got those clues in the actual face. You have to try and get an expression from maybe their eyes or mouth or some other um, feature rather than the sort of the whole shape and structure of their face. Well I take hundreds of photos of a, a subject and then I choose a few that I think are getting the expression that I'm after. Sometimes I take a bit from one photo and a bit from another and I combine them in the computer and get a sort of a digital image that also is simplified and, and contains the sort of essential elements of what I'm looking for. And then I draw up that computer-based um, graphic onto the canvas and start to paint. <laughs> um, I was once having a conversation with Ina Joyce who was and is quite elderly and she said to me, Sally, if you just keep doing something long enough, people start to take notice. And I think that's a very good advice for everyone, that you've just got to, as an artist, you, you've got to do what you feel is right for you. Don't try to please other people. And eventually you'll get better and better and people will start to take notice.